Hi, I'm Walter from EVs Enhanced and today I'm going to be showing you an easy way to diagnose what appears to be a relatively rare fault with the onboard charger in a 2011 or 2012 Nissan Leaf. This particular car came to us with the owner reporting that it wouldn't charge on the J1772 charge port, which is this one here, but it would charge on the Chardamo quick charge port, which is that one there. Let's start by demonstrating the problem. As you can see, the EVSC is indicating a fault and there's no charge lights on the dash indicating that it's charging. We've also checked the fault codes in the car, but there are no fault codes indicating any fault. So it isn't immediately obvious whether the fault is related to the EVSC or to the car or to some incompatibility between the two. As it turns out in this case, the car has the problem. But I've read about other people having the same issue and going through a lot of hassle trying to convince their lo local Nissan dealer that it was indeed a problem with the onboard charger in the car. The factory service manual isn't particularly helpful in this specific case either. After a bit of research and testing, I eventually diagnosed this problem using an oscilloscope connected into the pilot signal on the J1772 charge connector. When the EVSC was plugged in, the waveform I observed on the scope perfectly matched what is to be expected in the case of a fault that is referred to as a failed diode jack. But in hindsight, there was a much faster and easier way to confirm that the problem was indeed related to the car, so I'd like to demonstrate this now to help out anyone else who has the same problem. There are five terminals on the J1772 connector. You have these two large AC terminals here, referred to as line 1 and line 2. Then you have a large ground terminal at the bottom. And finally, there are these two smaller terminals, which are both signals related to safety and controlling the rate of charge. Without getting into specifics of how or why these two signals work, the one on the right is referred to as the proximity detection, and the one on the left is referred to as the pilot. Currently the car is turned off and we aren't going to plug in the EVSC for this test. There shouldn't be any live power at the connector right now, but as a precaution, especially seeing as we're dealing with a car with a suspected fault, I'm going to treat it as an unknown case where there could be live power and I'll put on these class zero insulated gloves. Let's start with looking at the proximity detection on the right. There should be approximately four and a half volts between this and ground, and there is, so that's looking normal. Next, let's change the multimeter to measure resistance and check the resistance between, between the pilot and ground. In this test, the orientation of the two leads on the multimeter is very important. First of all, the black lead should be connected to the common on the multimeter. At the J1772 connector, if we connect the black lead to ground and the red one to the pilot, then you should see a resistance in the kilo ohm range. That is normal. But if you connect the red lead to the ground and the black one to the pilot, then on a car without any faults, you should measure a much higher resistance, something in the mega ohm range. But that isn't what we're seeing here. We're seeing a lower resistance, which is in the kilo ohm range, just like when the multimeter leads were around the other way. That conclusively points to a problem with the onboard charger, which is in the back of the car on a 2011 or 2012 model Leaf. The charger now needs to be removed, either for repair or replacement. The first step in doing that is to power down the car, uh, which means disconnecting both the 12 volt battery and the high voltage battery, and then we'll do some safety checks to confirm nothing is live before removing the onboard charger itself. We've now got the car up on the hoist uh, to do two jobs. The first one is disconnecting the main uh, connector that connects to the high voltage battery, which is here. We've already done that. Um, it's a relatively easy job, but there are a few traps. There's three different steps of the process to disconnect that connector. And you just need to make sure you follow all those steps without uh, forcing anything. The service manual has pretty good information and, and pictures on how to do that. The second job that we're under here for is to drain the coolant from the cooling system. The charger is liquid cooled and you've got a couple of coolant lines that run up above the battery to the back of the car 
and we need to drain that coolant and disconnect the lines down the back at the charger. Now disconnected all the electrical wiring from the charger. Uh, that's these two high voltage connectors that go here and here. And these three low voltage uh, connectors that go uh, into the charger here. We've removed all of the mounting bolts, which go here, 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 and two up here. And now we're ready to move the charger. In this case, we ended up repairing the faulty onboard charger, which was quite cost effective compared to replacement. The fault was on this top circuit board which needed to be carefully removed from the charger. Once the circuit board was removed, the actual repair work really needs to be done by someone with sufficient experience and the required tools for servicing service mount electronics. D547 turned out to be a faulty component and we replaced it with an upgraded part that is less likely to fail in the future. We've now reassembled everything, bled the cooling system and powered the car back up. The car is now charging like it should and has been through several charging and drive cycles without missing a beat. So it's time to give the car back to its owner and move on to some new and more exciting projects from EVs Enhanced.